Hello everybody, welcome to the Eternal Card Breakdown. My name is Pojo, and today we're going to be talking about uh, the patch for April 22nd, which includes a pile of new buffs and some very, very serious nerfs. Uh, basically, a lot of the stuff that's happening is we're seeing a return to form of a lot of set one cards that were extremely strong, and a, a couple of nerfs to smugglers in particular. Uh, this is a big rebalance change. There's a lot of stuff that is like really sort of critical base game stuff that is getting updated here and like overall it should have a very serious impact on the meta as far as what's competitive and what's not and what kind of things are going well. Uh, so some of the main things that we're looking at are focusing on taking down cards that uh, give a lot of merchant card advantage, smugglers in particular, removing some of the merchant meta, uh, and also buffing up some of the core like set one strategies that gave aggro some really interesting potential. So uh, let's go ahead and talk about each of of these changes in turn. There are some really, really interesting ones. Um, we can start with my favorite, the Stone Scar changes, and we'll, we'll go ahead and start with Champion of Chaos, which has been brought back up from a 3 cost 3-3 three, three with a plus 1, plus 0 for each of its abilities, to a 3 cost 3-3 three, three with plus 1, plus 1 for each of abilities. That means that if Champion of Chaos has 3 Fire and 3 Shadow Influence, it is a 5-5 five, five Overwhelm Deadly for three. Now, this card, as far as champions go, may actually be the strongest champion. Like, it is an extremely powerful guy. Uh, like, basically, like, what this card does, she's just basically capable of dealing a tremendous amount of damage. Overwhelm and Deadly together mean that, of course, if you attack in and you kill something of your opponents, you deal only one damage to it, and then additional damage spills over the top, which combined with the other Stone Scar changes that we are seeing reversions to, is going to mean that Stone Scar has a lot of options to really just sort of spill damage over onto your opponent and make your opponent have to care about their life total more than they care about card advantage and board presence. This is something that is like really, really up Champion's Alley, and I think that the overall Stone Scar changes that are showing up are things that are going to like really make this card very, very good. I think of all of the changes that I've seen in this set, this is actually the most dangerous of the batch. Like, uh, there's a lot of interesting balance changes here, including another one that we'll talk about that is pretty interesting. But I would say that this one is probably the biggest power boost to a particular faction pairing out of any of them. Champion of Chaos is, of course, a very specifically Stone Scar card. It's not great in Winchest. If you want to do three color champion, it's not going to increase the strength of that deck all that much. So while it is a very scary card and you can play it in Winchest colors, uh, it may not necessarily be something that especially increases the power of that archetype. That being said, if you want to splash a little green, Champion of Chaos has some really good things going on with Display of Ambition. There's a lot of interesting stuff that you can do to sort of improve the strength of that deck. Uh, we're going to be bringing back some Stone Scar Maulers decks and playing around with mid-range Champion of Chaos, of course. Uh, aggro stuff is also quite possible. There's some really interesting Gunslinger decks that can happen with this. Hideout Pistol is a card that has played really well was Champion of Chaos in the past, so if you want to do Stone Scar Gunslingers, that kind of aggro style is now completely open, and that means that in addition to Rakano and Skycrag being very dominant archetypes, you can also do some really interesting Stone Scar stuff. So basically, this I think is like a really, really big change to aggro decks. It's a big change to anything that wants to do a lot of aggressive pressure, and basically allows you to really push damage on your opponent and do some crazy, crazy stuff. There's another card that pairs very well with Champion of Chaos, which was the first thing on the patch list notes. And we're going to go into that next. That's Argentport Instigator. Now, Argentport Instigator is a 3-3 three, three, for... Two. Uh, it normally is double shadow influence, but now it's back to its original one shadow influence. When a unit dies, it deals one damage to its owner. <coughs> So once again, this is a very strong gunslinger. You can do some awesome things with this card if you want to. Uh, but uh, like the main thing that adds to Instigator's ability here is that it is a much more aggressive unit because it can be played in two color decks without having issues getting played on turn two. Very frequently with Arch Import Instigator, the main problem with it would be that you have to play a lot of crests, a lot of banners and seats in order to make sure that you guaranteed that you had shadow, which meant that you had depleted power very frequently and you often couldn't play Instigator in decks that were fairly heavy on aggressive styles such as fire. Uh, Instigator really helps with those archetypes because it is a very powerful two drop for its cost and like its overall ability is just really really strong in particular with champion of chaos so this buff or revert is just really really solid in making sure that you have a solid base to do some stone scar gunslinger work and get some really really aggressive stuff across the line 
I forgot to take a drink of water before I started this. Um, yeah, so like basically uh, this card is uh, already we know that it's very good. The Double Shadow Influence was a pretty significant nerf to it. And now that it is much more playable as a two drop, it's one of the most powerful two drops that you can put down. It's just very, very good on its own. It deals a lot of damage. It is very, very capable of playing around with other things. And it's also a good counter to another card that is getting buffed up. Uh, Actually, one of the nice things about this buffs is that there is a sort of cycle of these buffs. Like, certain cards that got changed around are particularly, uh, like, like they kind of interact with each other very well. So, like, all of these cards getting reverted kind of got reverted at the same time, so that you have, like, some of the same interactions between those cards that you used to back in set one. So next up is Crown Watch Paladin, a 2-2 two -two Aegis Warcry. Uh, this used to be a 2-1, or rather it used to be a 2-2, two -two, and then it went to a 2-1, and now it has been reverted back to a 2-2. Two -two. This is another one of the really, really dangerous reverts. Uh, this card is terrifying. Um, it, it was a very, very good card in Rakano Warcry back in set one very early days. Uh, this card actually had to be nerfed back down to make it like a little bit worse. I really like this card, so I'm glad to see it back in sort of a playable space it wasn't very good as a 2-1 and people didn't really like playing with it all that much but i think this card is generally stronger in many situations than hojin the current 2-1 paladin of choice uh, this is just a really ridiculous aggro card like it's very strong in rakano aggro it gives you a lot of interesting buffs you get to play some really cool stuff with it with uh, warcry rakano and just play around with some very crazy decks. If you want to start moving into decks that are a little bit more merchant-less, I think that that's something that like this card particularly helps with. One of the things I really like about this buff is that it is something that really helps new players out. Uh, Rakano tends to come with some copies of uh, Crown Notch Paladin already. It's a very cheap card to craft, and this is one of the most powerful early decks that you can run. In addition, Crown Watch Paladin plays really well in the new Huru archetype, where you have Korivyat Palace as something to uh, pop into. That's not uh, a cheap deck, but with Corvette Palace being a legendary that you get specifically out of a set, it's pretty easy to transition into that after you've played around with Rakano a little bit. And there's a lot of other color pairings where Crown Watch Paladin is perfectly fine. Basically, it's a sticky unit. It gives consistent value over time. It's very, very good on board. It trades well with almost everything, except for Archonfort Instigator. It plays super well with Finest Hour, and it's like just really, really nuts as far as like all of that other stuff happens to go. Like I think this card just does really interesting things. Uh, it is a very strong card in the current meta. There are some interesting ways that it is a little bit more interactable now. Vara being a very particularly popular card makes this card a little bit worse than it used to be. Uh, there are a bunch of anti-Aegis answers out now that are much more common. Jotun Hurler was one particular answer to that, but that's getting nerfed, which is something that we'll talk about a little bit more. Uh, but in general, like cards tend to have a little bit higher stat lines now, and Paladin is a little bit more on par, simply because because there's a wider array of answers. And that's something that I think is going to be true about all of these reverts, is that while many of these cards are coming back into play as very, very powerful cards, they were powerful in a particular meta where there were very few answers to them. And I think the Paladin has some real answers now, even though it is just a good card that's going to get some pretty consistent value out of what it wants to do. So yeah, this card's really strong. Uh, this is the other card that I would say is the most dangerous out of all of the reverts, but it's just really, really interesting and does some cool, cool stuff. All right, we also have a rebuff to Rakano Artisan. Uh, this card used to be an armory staple. It was very, very strong for making relic weapon style decks happen, and it might actually come back again. I don't know if this card is really all that competitive anymore, simply because uh, relic weapon based strategies don't have as much strength as they used to. But now that you can play this card with like Sword of Akaria and all of the interesting like standard weapons i think it's fine that this card is coming back up from a 2-1 to a 2-2 this seems like a very very fair change um overall this card is very dangerous it gives you a pretty huge buff to a lot of different weapons in your deck you get to play around with a lot of the new cool weapons uh it's still very good with auric rune hammer and with uh like everything else that you want to play with that kind of setup however auric rune hammer is no longer going to stand up against like current like current setups with Vara and other things like that. I think you could definitely rebuild an armory deck and get some very good results out of this. I also think that this has some potential in a more aggro shell where you're playing some actual existing weapons and doing some interesting stuff with other gunslingers or soldiers. Uh, if you want to make really, really big weapons, Rakano Artisan's got some very interesting potential to make that happen. So red, green, purple, armory type styles might actually have a lot of uh, 
happiness here. The other thing that could really work out is red, green, blue armory with uh, display of honor, because display of honor with relic weapons is something that we really never saw a lot of. But now that we have a three cost card that can get two weapons back, and we actually have the ability to make those weapons matter enough, that that's a very scary prospect. I think this leads to some interesting control patterns, and we could potentially see some new armory in new colors to do some interesting control elements. So yeah, this is potentially like very, very cool. And hopefully we'll see some good, good stuff happen from this. All right, so those are the five reverts. Uh, there is an additional revert. There are additionally two other changes that are not quite reverts, but are very, very close. Uh, here's the big one, and this one's this one's also kind of scary. Flame Blast has gone from being a uh, X cost card or being a two cost card to a one cost card with its traditional power surge ability, which means that Flame Blast is essentially an X cost card once again. Uh, it is, as far as this revert this goes, this is almost a complete revert to what Flame Blast was originally. This card was very, very strong in previous sets for basically allowing you to push across for lots and lots of damage and get basically your opponent down to a lot of uh, a, a very problematic amount of life. Uh, with Flame Blast around, you often had to worry about being at lower than 9 or 10 life as opposed to being lower than around 6 for Obliterate. So, like, this is a card that really makes Stone Scar and other aggressive decks very spooky because there is just a lot of surprise damage that can come out of it. And very frequently, you can have your opponent as low as like 14 Flame Blast once, and then your opponent just has to uh, hopefully have some sort of life gain or else they can get hit again. It can also hit sites. It is a uh, the, has the ability to blow up cards like Koravyat Palace, uh, cards like uh, Howling Peak, basically anything big. Uh, it is something that you can actually use to disable those sites if you need to, to get yourself into a better control position. So if you're playing card for card advantage and you want something to finish things off, I think that's a particularly good option. They didn't revert Char Chain Flail, which is fine. Uh, those two cards together I think would have been extremely strong, uh, but like this is enough of a series of changes that I think the Stone Scar Maulers archetype can come back quite well, and mid range to ag and aggressive Stone Scar decks can really have a wonderful time. Burn is really, really serious with Flame Blast around. Like, this card makes such a difference for more aggressive decks. And again, this is a real help for new players who want to play really aggressive decks or who want to play some interesting control decks that have really good top ends where you can actually get the reach that you need to win the game. Like, this card is very, very strong. There's not a lot of reasons not to run it. I would switch these back into my basics decks because they are just really, really good cards, and you can definitely do some amazing things with them so yeah i'm excited about flame blast card is really really wild and does some great things the final buff is to treachery this card now hits units or sites this is a really good change overall uh this means that you can actually actively use treachery to get rid of cards that would otherwise be pretty devastating to you. When your opponent merchants for that Coriviat Palace, you can always have a treachery just held in hand to make sure that you uh, have the ability to answer it, and that can potentially slow down the big Huru style a lot. I think this card might actually be one of the better options as far as answering sites go. Uh, flame blasting a site never feels that good because the site has already gotten some pretty significant advantage, and in the case of Withstand, that could be too much advantage for you to effectively deal with. When you are preemptively getting rid of the site, you get really, really good advantage out of that. And basically this means that you can solve for certain sites without a lot of issues. Also, since treachery normally hits units, it's very easy to just throw it very early and mess with your opponent's overall style. I think this card's really, really strong. Uh, it's very good in Stone Scar styles and the two damage really sort of balances out the amount of stuff that it does. I actually think this card might be stronger than Sabotage just for its ability to hit a wider variety of units or a wider variety of cards and make those cards actually be very very important so i think that that's like a really critical aspect of it and that gives this card a lot of strength to play around with so this is pretty wild really really good card um and yeah like stone scar has many many tools to play with now uh in varying amounts this could easily be a two or three of in most stone scar decks and can even be a four of if you're feeling particularly feisty all right so with these buffs also come some nerfs and uh the nerfs all come to smugglers. This is not a particular surprise to me. Um, I think I've been calling for most of these nerfs for quite a bit, um, but like they are pretty crazy nerfs overall. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about them in order. First off are 
second time nerf to Red Canyon Smuggler. Red Canyon Smuggler was a 2-3, went down to a 2-2, and is now a 2-1 with double damage. And I think at this point it might actually be something that is a little bit more controllable. I am very on board with this nerf. Red Canyon Smuggler was a wildly powerful card, and kind of still is, even though it can be much more easily killed and dealt with on the turn that it is played. The, the fact that this card could just basically curve out into cards like Deep Forge Plate or Inquisitor's Blade and end the game on their own meant that they were very different from any other merchant a lot out there. Like they are just a card that really significantly influences their own game plan and adds a lot of consistency and repetitiveness to what happens. So like it's just very hard to run this card to not run this card and to not get really really good results out of this card regardless of what deck you're playing because you can run the same kind of market pretty much every time and get the same kind of results pretty much every time so there were a lot of things that could have been changed about this card uh i think that like if you're going to keep it as a double damage unit you pretty much have to just keep nerfing those stat lines until the card is not as good and a 2-1 is a reasonable stat line for red canyon smuggler this is a much higher risk card for a still consistent and still very damaging reward so as long as you can keep the red canyon smuggler alive you can still do some pretty crazy stuff with it still has the same play patterns as it always did but now it's much more likely to actually eat a torch or a vara's favor or a snowball and potentially actually lose value as opposed to gaining value or gaining the board or the win con um yeah overall i think anything that slightly decreases the win rate of this card is definitely a good idea because this card needs to not be consistent for it to be an interesting or entertaining play pattern so yeah uh this is one of the major changes the other one is that hidden road was also nerfed twice hidden road was a 3-3 went down to a 2-3 is now a 2-2 two -two. uh 2-2 two -two with life still nonetheless still has the capacity to stabilize and get you into some better situations but now this card can be hit by piercing shot and a couple of other cards that are particularly necessary uh it is it will trade poorly with the quick draw units Rakano outlaw and wyatt it'll actually be a lot less good against those aggro stock and it won't have quite as much of a stabilization point where it just gets you a plenty of health back. You get basically a little less health off of it when you're blocking a Champion of Fury. You get the ability for it to be killed by other things. It's just particularly a good change because Hidden Road Smuggler just had a lot of value for what it was offering. And since it had so much value and it also had the consistency that it was offering in terms of basically giving you access to um, your site, Regent's Tomb, or any other amount of interesting removal cards. This card could typically get you into a control matchup very easy, uh, very easily without getting into a lot of trouble. And I think that it was just way too safe a card. It basically offered too much to control decks in Argentport or Winchest colors, and those decks remained powerful throughout pretty much the entirety of Defiance. So Hidden Road going down means that it's going to be a particularly strong nerf to that whole style and should help with Winchest uh, piles in a very big way. This is also important for making sure that Champion of Chaos and all of the interesting Stoneskar changes don't turn into yet more fuel for the Winchest fire. I would say that this is something that actually does increase the amount of aggro in the world, and since that's one of the stated goals of this patch, I think this is some, a particularly important change for making sure that the meta is healthy and that things get into a little bit less of the mid-range soup that we have seen. This is also important, and all of the Smuggler changes are important, important for reasons of we are coming up on our new set. Uh, assumably there are going to be new smugglers in that set, anywhere from three to five, and if we get new smugglers in that set we don't want people playing 12 smuggler decks without having very serious consequences for that happening. Smugglers can be good cards, but they can't be so good that they're the most common thing played in their faction pairings, and if it gets to the point where people are just always running 12 of in particular setups, then the meta gets very stale very fast because everyone's got the same set of cards that they play at, C at 3 every single turn, and that's something that we really need to avoid overall going forward, so uh, this is a preemptive nerf as much as it is a health nerf for the current meta, and I think that that overall is a very good thing. Uh, Smuggler still does some cool things. I think it's still a perfectly viable card, and I think all of the Smugglers came out of this just fine in terms of playability, even though they are no longer quite as strong. 
The final nerf was the Great Valley Smuggler. This one may come as a surprise to people, but Great Valley Smuggler was a 4 4 for 3 with a market ability. Uh, it was doing an awful lot for those rat decks with Severin that were very, very popular in the previous tournaments, as well as for a lot of the other relic based strategies. I'm very glad that those strategies had their day, and I think that this actually still has that ability. But again, we're adding a little bit more vulnerability to these cards, and we're adding a little bit more of a play pattern to them where you actually have some opportunities to interact with the merchants and get rid of the merchants quickly with cards like piercing shot and other sort of spell damage based strategies this brings great valley smuggler back in line with all of the other smugglers which uh, compared to howling peak and ebon dune this is exactly the kind of stat line that you want it still gets to be a 4-4 when you have a relic which is great if you want to play cheaper relics you can do some really good things with that if you are playing the severin deck with rat cages you're probably not too unhappy with this card uh, if you're playing like very very cheap things and you can typically get some good aggro out of this card but there's a little bit more risk to it you do have to have relics you have to make decisions about what kind of relics that you have to have i think that overall this decreases the win rate of this card just a little bit but also increases the sort of interesting nature of it and increases the interaction that you have with it and so i'm wholly on board with this change like this is really quite a good deal and i would say that it's just like a definite uh improvement in the overall state of things so uh, those three nerfs to smugglers happens, and we also have two nerfs to existing cards. Uh, this one took me a little by surprise. Jotun Hurler is now a 3-3 for 5 with the fate ability of create and draw a snowball. Jotun Hurler's fate ability was always very strong, and it was particularly useful for getting rid of Hojins in the current meta because you just needed a good one-cost option to blow up uh, your opponent's stuff. It then played as a 4-4 later on, which was really helpful for Korovat Palace strategies because like, uh, it's just a really nasty aggressive card uh, so as something that sticks really well in a Corvette Palace me meta and can be very very good in those situations I can see why this card got the nerf as opposed to Corvette Palace itself which is a site that you probably want to avoid nerfing as long as you can uh, if indeed Corvette does deserve a nerf um, so yeah like this card is very very strong the fate ability is very very good so it makes sense that the stat line would be made worse uh, I'm surprised by how much worse the stat line was made considering it was already not a terribly efficient card but uh yeah as far as nuking it goes it's still very useful for the snowball and the main thing that really makes hurler good nowadays is that this card is just really really easy to trade into merchants and smugglers and get other good cards out of it while still having early removal for your opponent's aggro stuff so if you want to make aggro more viable in the meta this is a really good card to hit and i think that this is obviously going to make that option just a lot more viable uh yeah so very sad for Jotun Hurler. That one was a really interesting card, but uh, yeah, that snowball, snowball is still around. You can still use it, and it's still got a lot of its good interaction. I don't know about this last one. Sheltering Rider has been changed from a 0-5 to a 0-4. Uh, this makes it so that it can't be killed by Display of Ambition. Uh, it does make it so that it can no longer block a lot of the more scary aggro things, and I think that's the general idea, is that if you're playing more aggressive stuff, it really sucks to have a Sheltering Rider blocking your Champion of Fury and your other like more aggressive things. If you have good quick draw units and you can't quite get above that 0-5, that creates a lot of problems overall. And this card is also really sticky with Korovyat Palace because it is an Aegis card that uh, gets Aegis back when you play Korovia Palace, which made it a very, very strong Flyers card overall for giving you a lot of value and a lot of advantage. Um, so yeah, the nerf to this seems relatively justified. I do think that it not being hitable by Display of Ambition is an interesting buff to it, but overall this card's win rate should decrease, and as a pretty powerful Huru midrange card, I think I'm fine with this particular nerf. This is straight up a nerf to Korovia Palace. There are not any other decks that are currently running Sheltering Rider, and like, if you're running Sheltering Rider, you're running Korovia Palace. That's just absolutely going to happen. So this is a particular nerf to that site. So if you were looking for a nerf to that site, which you probably were if you were playing at all in last month's meta, uh, I think you might be pretty happy with this change. Uh, this does enable a lot of interesting, cheap, aggressive strategies. So where do we go from here? 
Uh, the meta is going to be different. I think that overall, all of these cards that have been buffed are going to see play. Smugglers uh, will still see play. Jotun Hurler will still see play. Sheltering Rider will still see play. But all of those decks are going to have slightly worse win rates and may not end up being tier 1 lists or decks that can really compete in the meta against some of the more aggressive styles that are actually going to be out there. We're going to see Rakano aggro come out again. We might see some Skycrag aggro come out again, just because some of the mild uh, deterrence to it have been nerfed uh but like also we are definitely going to see stone scar aggro and potentially some stone scar mid-range lists come out of the woodwork i think that overall the meta should be more diverse as a result of this but also you're gonna have to keep an eye out for aggro decks and actually build in strategies to solve for them keep in mind cards like hailstorm and defiance those cards are really really important defiance in particular is critical against champion of chaos a card that previously had almost no good answers that were cheap and easy Easy and gave you that very effective style. So I think if you're green, you're going to want to run four copies of Defiance for the conceivable future because Champion of Chaos is an outrageously good card and Defiance is one of the cards that makes it feel like a very, very terrible card. So uh, highly recommend using that if you're trying to figure out how to build your mid-ranger control. If you're trying to figure out how to build your aggro decks, look to these buffs. Like they are definitely going to be leaders in what kind of deck you want to build. Uh, if you want to build Huru stuff, you can definitely do some interesting things with Crown Notch Paladin. Rakano has Paladin and Artisan to play with. Champion of Chaos and all of the Stone Scar tools are available to build interesting Stone Scar, Winchest, and uh, three color decks in red, in shadow fire and primal so there's some really interesting options there extune has got some really good stuff in the form of display of honor and rakano artisan and crown watch paladin you can do some interesting renown things paladins are available now there's just so many interesting new tools to play with uh, i think there's a lot of different decks that you can fiddle around with and uh always beware uh getting flame blasted to face run life gain if you can cards like factory quota to shut down life gain are going to be pretty important for flame blast style decks so be aware of that uh it's gonna be wild and fun for the next couple of weeks leading up to the ecq and the new set release so look forward to that hopefully the meta doesn't crystallize too quickly hopefully the meta is insane i'm looking forward to seeing everything that happens and that's my basic opinion on what's going on. Uh, yeah, this was a wild set of changes. I am very much in favor of all of these changes. I missed one somehow. Uh, I know that we didn't talk about Desert Marshal. I must have somehow skipped completely over it, which is a pity. Uh, this was the one card, uh, <laughs> so this is not as good a note to go out on, but that's okay. Uh, Desert Marshal did get uh, rebuffed from a 2-1 to a 2-2, so uh, this, is <laughs> this is the one buff that I'm not so sure of, uh, mostly because like it's a perfectly fair buff. It actually does uh, allow you to respond better to cards like Crown Watch Paladin and Champion of Chaos, both of which yeah, Combray is probably going to need some good answers to. But I mean, this card is literally called the Fun Police. I kind of wish they'd found a different toolkit to uh, change up. But nonetheless, this is a really good buff to all sorts of Chalice Control decks and all sorts of aggressive Combray lists. You can actually do Combray aggro again, which is pretty wild. Uh, look to that. That's a definite possibility. Um, yeah, so like overall, I think that that's uh, pretty interesting stuff uh, should help out a lot as far as keeping some of these other decks under control. And yeah, this, this buff comes basically part and parcel with all of the other reverts because this card really helped answer those cards previously in other metas, so it makes perfect sense that it would also come out. So the meta is going to be wild and free. It's going to be pretty high on aggro. There's going to be a lot of interesting things going on, and I'm really excited to see what changes are occurring. So let's go ahead and go out and play with those cards. I am super excited. We're going to be doing some Stone Scar Maulers lists today and possibly for the foreseeable future because I love Stone Scar. I'm actually so happy that Stone Scar is back in force. We're going to be doing some really interesting decks, uh, Gunslingers and Maulers and a lot of other fun stuff. So let's go ahead and uh, call it there. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, to the YouTube folks, I am off. And to the Twitch folks, we're going to be playing some fun games. So see you guys later. Thank you again. Bye.